Hello, everyone. Buenas tardes. Thank you for waiting for us. We are excited to have you all for this event tonight. Welcome to the Latinx, Latina, Latino Professionals Presente Career Panel. This panel is in partnership with the SJSU Career Center as part of Diversity Career Week. At the end of the presentation, we will be sharing information on how to access the additional events happening the rest of this week. Our panel today is sponsored by the SGSU Chicanx Latinx Student Success Center, also known as Centro, the SGSU Latino Alumni Network, and the SGSU Latino Student Business Association. Before we begin our panel, we ask that you officially check into the event by clicking on the link in the chat that Lily is about to add. Um, collecting this information is important to us, so please take just a couple of seconds uh, to complete this form at this time. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, we will be introducing our agenda for this evening. So, we'll begin with a welcome and introduction, uh, followed by a, mod a moderated question and answer. Next, we will welcome students to drop in your questions in the chat box below uh, for panelists to answer. And we will close off with more information about the Latino Alumni Network as well as LBSA. So again, welcome everyone. My name is Yesenia Guzman. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I am one of the student moderators for this evening. I am a fourth year business marketing major at San Jose State with a minor in Chicanx Studies. I grew up in San Francisco, California, and a fun fact is that this semester, I am the media marketing director for the Latino Business Student Association. I'll pass it on to my colega, Jennifer. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Terrazas, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm currently majoring in finance. And my hometown is Fremont, California. That is where I grew up in. I am also a third year and I am the VP of Finance for LBSA. And I am super excited today to hear from our panelists. I will pass it back to you, Zanya. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, now we would like to briefly introduce our panelists for this evening. Our Latinx, Latina, Latino panelists come from various backgrounds and industries. They are working professionals who are here to share their story, background, career trajectory, and advice with us as GSU students. So as you hear them speak, I encourage you all to take some notes. Feel free to ask questions in the chat box below. At the end of the panel, there will be time to address your questions. So I have the honor of introducing our first three panelists. They are Mauricio Perez, he, him, his. He is the Vice President Streaming and Emerging Business at Pluto TV Viacom International. Next, we have Isa Hernandez, she, her. She is the Manager uh, of Talent Operations at Adobe. Uh, finally, we also have Lucia Mendoza, she, her, ella. She is a social worker training specialist at Santa Clara County and Social Services Agency. And it is my pleasure to introduce our additional panelist, um, Joaquin Portugal, he, him. He is a senior director of corporate at PMA at Sumo Logic. We also have Elisa Gallegos and she is the public health nurse city at City of uh, Berkeley Public Health, and Maria Trejo, she, her, and she is the Dean of Students at Homestead High School. Great, thank you so much for being in community with us tonight. Now we will begin with our moderated Q&A. So I have the prompt that will be answered by all of our 
all, all of our six panelists. Um, each panelist will have three minutes to respond. So now that we got to share a little bit about us, we'd love to learn a little bit about you all. You may want to start with sharing your hometown, your major while at SJSU or at your other college, information about your family, family heritage and traditions, social identities, what social identities are most salient to you. Um, if you identify as a first generation college student, who or what played a major influence in your career goals, dreams growing up, as well as what are your interests outside of current jobs. So I would like to invite Isa to begin. Sure, love to um, share. Can you hear me? Yes. Good, awesome. So glad to be here. Um, I was born and raised here in San Jose, uh, specifically East San Jose. Went to Mount Pleasant, Pleasant High School in uh, San Jose State. Um, I was a major of social science. I wanted to be a teacher. That was my ultimate goal. Uh, when I graduated, the teachers were on strike. So unfortunately, I had to find a new um, direction with my degree, which um, I found myself in HR, so in recruiting. Um, my family, so my mom and dad uh, both grew up here in the valley. My dad's family's from Guanajuato, Mexico, and my mom's family's from uh, Texas. My husband is also from Texas as well, and I have two boys. I have a 12-year-old and a 20-year-old who's attending um, CS, uh, CSU Monterey Bay um, as well. Um, I am Mexican-American. I'm a mom and I'm a professional. I'm trying to pay it forward. So I was in the same spot, um, graduating, didn't know what I was going to do. And I love the fact that I get to speak here today and um, help in terms of opportunities as well and mentoring, which I love. So um, my sister, one of my younger sisters, I'm the oldest of five. So one of my younger sisters is also alumni. And interesting enough, um, I have an uncle, my uncle Joe, Hernandez, who is no longer with us. He was a professor at San Jose State back in the 80s. He taught Spanish as well. So um, a favorite tradition is tamale making. So really look forward to the holidays, which my husband actually is teaching my sons how to make tamales. So that's a favorite of ours. So glad to be here. Thank you, Isa. Paying it forward, that, that's definitely a uh, an inspiring uh, mission. Uh, I would like to invite Mauricio to tell us a little bit about himself next. Yeah, hi. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. I'm connecting with the uh, San Jose State. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a first generation college uh, graduate. Um, my background is uh, Nicaragua. I'm, I'm born and raised in Nicaragua. I migrated to the United States when I was about 15, um, back in the 80s, late 80s. So dating myself a bit here. But um, after graduating from Silver Creek High School, I um, had a passion for working in vehicles and working on cars. So the most you know, uh, relevant career there was like mechanical engineering. Why not? sounds mechanical, it's engineering, I can go into that. So um, I graduated in uh, 95 with a degree in mechanical engineering, concentration in robotics. And after some time working in um, GE, I decided to do a career change. I figured that, you know, nuclear technology wasn't something I wanted to do. And I went into telecommunications. And um, Interesting enough, um, my background in Spanish was really what led me to the job because the company that was hiring me uh, was looking for someone bilingual to, to help with customers across international markets. So from that point, I kind of evolved my career. Um, personally, I, I enjoy, you know, all the traditions that go with the Latin culture. Um, I've grown here my whole life. I consider myself a, a Native American, a more American than than anything else. So I have a lot of friends. I, I affiliate and associate with a lot of the Hispanic cultures around you know, the Bay Area. I love this area because it's so diverse 
into all the different areas that you can associate with. So um, I live here in San Jose, wife and two kids. Um, one of them is going to college. The other one is in high school. And yeah, it's, um, it's a real honor to be here with you. I'll probably be talking a little bit more about career futures and things that we can do. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Mauricio, for sharing. I also identify as a first-generation college student, and I'm interested in learning more about that career shift that you made during college. Uh, I would like to invite Lucia to introduce herself next. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you all today. Oh, it's so exciting. Um, I love school, love college. How many of you? I know a bunch of you do, and maybe some of you don't, but I think a bunch of you do. I think we're in um, probably a room full of like book nerds and like, you know, stuff like that. So I love doing, um, and even though I can't see you, I just know, I just know you're out there. Yeah, me, me, right? <laughs> okay, um, so Lucia Mendoza, my hometown is San Jose, born and raised um, East Side and Evergreen and um, kind of just all about, those are the main areas. Um, I studied social work at San Jose State. I have um, an MSW, so it was my master's degree. I got my uh, undergraduate degree in sociology in Northern Ireland. Um, and I thought I was going to be a researcher. So I thought sociology, I'm gonna do research. It sounds, cause it's, uh, it's really interesting. So, um, I came, when I came back to live in the States, I got a job temporarily as a, I thought it was temporarily as a social worker with the County of Santa Clara. And they had a work study program there. And that's how just, you know, I found I loved working with families. I loved connecting with youth. And it just was so fulfilling that uh, I decided to take advantage of their work study program and, and do my MSW at San Jose State. So that's, that was really cool. Um, so my family wise, my, um, my parents both immigrated here. So they, um, they've been here since the sixties. They, um, college university was super important to them because uh, neither of them finished their degree. My dad came here. He worked a lot. He, uh, opened a business. And if you all have been around, if you don't know, maybe your parents know, it's, it's actually been around for a long time. It's in East San Jose at the Tropicana. It's called San Jose Menswear. It's, he retired, so it's no longer there. But um, if you ask your parents and if they've been here for a while, they might know. Um, let's see. The identities, Mexicana, Americana. Um, I also am a very spiritual person. I think that's the most, the thing that's the most close to me. Um, I think the Latina, um, Latinx is encompassed in that, but I also, I don't eat animals, I'm vegan, so, <laughs> uh, but that's part of my spirituality, uh, that I just want to live the most compassionate life that I can, and so that's, that's part of it for me. Um, like I said, uh, my parents didn't go to college, so it was really important for them, for me to go to college. But I, I kind of don't consider myself first generation because I have a lot of cousins and uncles who who have um, higher education. Some of them have doctorates. So, you know, but it's, it's around. Uh, as far as um, the dreams are, you know, I thought I wanted to be an actress when I wanted to, <laughs> when I was little. <laughs> Um, and actually, that's still an interest of mine outside the acting and the arts and all of that. It's just, I, I love that. And I think it's such, it enriches our lives. Um, but I also loved helping people. And I think my my parents, um, as I mentioned, my dad has a store, but it was very community oriented. And I think just their approach to providing even that kind of service, uh, which I might tell you later, because you know, we have to have to stop talking. But I think just their approach to giving uh, a service to the community, even though it was a business, um, and them al always wanting to help the immigrant community back in the 70s, um, that just really influenced me and in really wanting to do something to help my my community, and especially having the language. So, so that's me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucia. 
Um, we're excited to learn more about how your family, your upbringing has influenced your career choices, your college journey. So thank you so much. I would like to invite Joaquin Portugal to introduce himself next. Yes, hi, definitely. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's glad to be here with you um, as a, a fellow uh, SJSU alumni. Um, so as uh, mentioned, my name is Joaquin Portugal. Um, and, you know, I grew up in San Marcos. Um, and if anyone knows uh, the California, it's a small city uh, near San Diego. I spent a lot of time at the beach there. Um, and, you know, really enjoyed my youth there. Um, over time, I slowly moved up uh, California until I uh, ended up um, moving to the Bay Area. And I moved to the Bay Area shortly or um, right after the 1994 um, Northridge earthquake. So I had just completed my first semester at Cal State Northridge um, and the earthquake struck in January. So I was actually on break and getting ready to start my new semester. My family had moved up to the Bay Area about a year and a half before um, I had started uh, school in Southern California. And I took that as a sign that maybe I needed to be closer to family. So I made the transfer to San Jose State, uh, which turned out to be probably the, not probably, the best decision of my life um, for a number of different reasons. Um, you know, one of the reasons, <laughs> uh, so one of those reasons is that's where I actually met my wife, uh, Patricia, who's actually on the call as well. So we, um, you know, we met at San Jose State. We uh, got to know each other a little bit there. I uh, know a couple of people on this call as well as from my days there. Um, but, you know, for me, I always had a passion for business, right? And, you know, to the point where I actually took some business classes when I was in high school. Um, and I took a business law class at the local community college. And I did also a couple other things to learn about business and hospitals. I actually thought I wanted to be a doctor at one point in my high school career or high school life, but quickly decided I did not want to be a doctor. Um, but so I ended up uh, graduated from San Jose State with a double major uh, in accounting and information systems. Um, and this is before they had a combined major. I think you guys have a, a combined major now. Uh, but I always wanted to kind of pair business with inf um, technology, uh, and which really served me well in my career. And, you know, especially being in tech uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the best decision was to, to move to um, the Bay Area and uh, start a family, get to know my wife. We've been married for 26 years. We have three wonderful children uh, who all, by the way, are over 18. And, and although we're, we're not officially empty nesters, we have, you know, very little responsibilities left in, in that uh, context. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that I think about what grounds us as a family and grounds me as a person is really uh, the deep connection that we have in our Catholic faith and our Latin culture. Uh, growing up as a kid, um, I don't know what it was, but I always felt my parents um, kind of made the, the choice or felt like they had to pick one over the other. So being of Mexican descent, uh, we grew up in an area that was predominantly Caucasian. And I always felt like they made the decision to kind of choose being American or, or kind of trying to assimilate into the U.S. culture. And, and for me, what that meant was I didn't learn Spanish until um, later in life. Uh, we didn't celebrate some of the cultural, um, some of the really great cultural things that we have. Um, we just recently celebrated Noche Mexicana here at the family. Um, but, you know, what I realized is, and, and you know, I, I'm blessed with a really large extended family from my wife's side, which really embraces the culture really embraces family and really brings us together um, to kind of foster those cultural connections um, as well as importance of education and giving back. Um, when I think about, you know, growing up, my parents um, didn't complete college. My mom, you know, started high school, but didn't finish. My dad actually started college, but wasn't able to finish due to financial hardships. So although I don't consider myself first-generation college student, um, I do see the differences um, in the contrast between um, children or kids um, that are first generation and, and may not have um, that background or their encouragement from the families um, or even the knowledge. Um, when I've gone through um, the contrast, like what my kids went through and how I perceive it's very easy, right? Both my wife and I um, went and got our undergrads and, and have our master's. 
Um, and I just see the differences in terms of the ability and easiness to understand and maneuver the application process, the financial processes, everything from the fact of studying for SATs. And I refer, I think back to the time when I was going to college. Thankfully, um, my parents didn't discourage it, but they didn't really encourage it. Um, I kind of had to navigate all that on my own. Um, so I do realize that, you know, there's a lot of first generation um, students um, here with us today and, and still, in, you know, in, in um, school. Um, but I, I do kind of value and, and recognize the, the desire and how hard it may be for a lot of you. Uh, but I do recognize the importance of an education and, and applaud everyone here for, um, you know, figuring it out. Thank you, Joaquin. Um, yep. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much for sharing uh, about your story. It's so interesting to hear about your uh, connection at San Jose State and how it was one of the best decisions you made. Um, we're excited to learn more about your your career journey, your academic journey at San Jose State. Uh, I would like to now invite Elisa Gallegos to introduce herself next. Muy buenas noches. Este, mucho gusto a todos. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be, I think, I am connected to San Jose State via a few of you on this call, and I am honored to be asked to come in as the outlier, which is a, an honor that I, I hold in many areas. Elisa Gallegos, I have uh, over 30 years experience. I work in the area of public health. I am a registered nurse with a public health certificate and a certified diabetes educator in chronic disease management. I want to acknowledge the land of the Native Americans that stood before us in the Ohlone uh, tribe that is also in San Jose. Specifically, I think it's uh, Temian people, uh, different, um, different uh, natives within the Ohlone tribe. So I honor and respect them and uh, stand on the shoulders because those of us who have had the opportunities of having an education really do it because of those who came before us. Um, I acknowledge my uh, family who is from Guanajuato, Mexico, from Mexico City, my father who immigrated here in the early 50s. Um, and we have family that also was part of the Bracero program back way, way back. Um, I am the youngest of five and um, we are first generation college students, but because I was the, the last of you know, my tribe, uh, I felt like Joaquin said, a different experience because my siblings helped me learn. You know, my oldest sister started it off and I just learned. And I went to the University of San Francisco. Um, I got my nursing degree with my public health certificate and I did not have the experience of Chicano studies, of learning about um, those social and political identities until my sisters were doing their PhD at UC Berkeley. So although University of San Francisco is was smack in the in San Francisco, right? You have all this diversity, it was not diverse. At University of San Francisco, um, the Latinos that were there started the Latino club then. <laughs> And now they have a whole center. Um, I connected with the Hawaiian students. I connected with the researchers. And, and so it was very interesting. But my uh, uh, social and political identity is Chicana. Uh, and that is very rooted in Chicano studies that both my sisters have a PhD in. And really working and learning with UC Berkeley student. So I, I really consider myself, um, you know, nursing educated at USF, um, rooted in community. Our, our family, I have some family members on this panel, <laughs> is very rooted in our culture, our being Mexicanos and um, being proud of where we come from. And I think that established really strong uh, self-esteem and values, um, which we all hold on to today. Um, that has engaged us in remaining really close-knit family and community advocates. Um, always helping, you know, as many of us can attest to an experience that we helped our, our papas translate, right? We were interpreters and 
for me, it was healthcare. It's all about healthcare. It's still about healthcare. And, um, you know, during this pandemic, um, I'll share more a little later about what it is I do. I will task all of you as public health warriors um, because we cannot get through this without each other, um, supporting each other in different ways, even in trying to provide information. Um, I balance the um, work we do now during this pandemic with the outdoors. I invite all of you to connect with Latino Outdoors on Facebook. There's a really active group down in the South Bay um, and really connect, um, as some of you said on the call, with your spirituality and what brings you and puts you in a state of peace. And I think that's one of the things that um, is super important that we'll talk about later, that um, we often get really focused on our career, that we forget our mental, physical, emotional health, which should be primary. And that's what the, uh, the outdoors and our whole environmental justice um, that we can bring into that, that I believe is part of a holistic approach to health. So I am super privileged and honored to be here with you, uh, San Jose State Spartans, yay. <laughs> Right, you're Spartans. Um, so, thank you. Mucho gusto. Thank you so much, Elisa, for that land acknowledgement. Thank you for acknowledging those who came before us and those who we are currently going forward with. Um, I think it's very interesting how you introduced the holistic approach, uh, your holistic approach to public health. Um, last but not least, I would like to invite Maria Trejo to tell us more about herself. Ooh, the hard, hard group to follow and try to impress our, our guests listening today. But hola, I'm another Tejana. I'm from Laredo, Texas. I descend from a migrant family of strawberry pickers and orange pickers and traveling throughout the U.S. So... Um, definitely that's uh, where a lot of my motivation comes from, like many of the panelists here, and I'm sure the students that are here with us tonight. Our parents push us, their, their hard work, their long hours, their callous hands, and, and so that's what drove me to be able to reach my goals and eventually focus because I, I did go astray a little just with the freedoms that come with college. And so I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I'm a first generation college student in the US. So I do have uh, family members or an uncle that was educated in Mexico, but you know that that doesn't transfer over. And so education was big in my family. And so um, for my grandfather is very important. I was raised by grandparents. Um, for my grandfather is very important to give me opportunities as a female and also um, to make sure that I was American, that I was born in the U.S., to make sure that I had um, more opportunities than what they had and what my uncle and my mother had. So um, I started off as a liberal studies major. I had a whole lot of fun and enjoyed college life a little too much. And eventually, um, my saving grace, I believe, was landing a job in a latchkey program that then led, gave me the experience to be able to apply for a, a job as as a classified staff member at Eastside Union High School District where I ran into many great mentors that gave me opportunities and, and also encouraged me to finish school and I also had a tight group of females that supported me and pushed me along the way as well and made sure that I kept accountable to my goals and to my uh, my dreams and so I became an educator. Um, the, the kid that slacked a little bit at college, you know, is now a dean of students. And so at that point, when I was working in Eastside and saying, you need to go to college, you need to go to college. And, you know, here I was not having finished. My students were another source of encouragement and motivation to make sure that I practiced what I preached. And so I went back and finished and um, earned a master's degree in education, admin credential, teaching credential, too many credentials, um, but um, I'm here to to be a role model for for our students, not just Latino students, but all all students. And so I use my background and my experiences um, to be able to motivate my my kids. I call them my kids. And so 
I identify as a Mexican American, and but most recently with uh, the focus in education on anti-racism, I, I feel that I can now actually honor the name, the title of Chicana, because I didn't, I, I wasn't very political as, you know, meet the needs of the kids and make sure that they're successful and they graduate and they have opportunities. But now it's really being advocate, an advocate for equity and making sure that all of our students feel safe and that they have the same opportunities regardless of their economic background or the color of their skin. So I, I proudly have taken on the identity of, of Chicana. And um, what do I do to rest when I can? Because education, don't be fooled. Education, it's a 24 hour job. Um, ask my husband after, after school, at night, letters of rec, weekends, you have to call that parent, you have to call that kid, you gotta check their, their grades and their attendance. So it's a 24 hour job. So when I can, I can get some sleep. I like to hike in the Allen Rock Hills. And I, got, I like to support our SJSU football team. Um, I never went to football games as an undergrad, which is weird to me now, but I'm there every, every weekend, weekend supporting. And so I'm a proud Spartan, my undergrad and my master's, and I'm still connected as an advisor there. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you all our panelists for introducing yourselves. We are excited to start our moderated uh, Q&A portion now and go more in depth with what you all shared. Our questions are um, organized in themes. So we will begin with your SJSU slash college experience, followed by your journey post San Jose State post college experience. Then we will do a lightning round. So this one will probably go by quicker, um, but it will consist of your current career experiences as well as advice to current students. So I know we all have so much to share. It's, it's a very diverse uh, panel tonight. So thank you all. And now I'll pass it on to Jennifer. Thank you, Yesenia. And now we, I will be asking the following question. And it is more towards what your experience was as an undergraduate while you were in college. And the questions are, did you ever change your major? And if so, what influenced that change or how did you go about it? Also, what if, um, any, uh, if any student organizations, programs, or support systems that helped you become the professional you are today? What practices, habits did you develop during your time as an undergraduate that have helped you in your personal and professional success? And lastly, did you ever experience any external pressures during college? And if so, what were they and how did you overcome them? And I want to go and invite Maria to answer any of these questions. It is your choice, but I do want to invite Maria to respond to any of these questions. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. So yes, I did change my major. I started as a liberal studies uh, major. Uh, the goal was to be an, an elementary kindergarten teacher. And then um, through my involvement in my sorority, I was able to volunteer at a local latchkey program and work with little ones. And I quickly realized that little ones don't un understand um, cause and effect and consequences to, to their choices. And so that was uh, a little frustrating for me, but uh, quickly I knew that I needed to go at a higher, to a higher level in grade. So changed my major to Spanish and uh, with a minor in literature. And like I mentioned, I, you know, I had a good old time in college um, growing up as the only female in the family with a lot of rules, a lot of restrictions. Um, I don't know how many, how, if this applies to any other females and on the panel, but you know, I need to be home before the sun went down and very traditional Mexicano families, boys don't call you, you, you all of that good stuff. You don't even get to watch your, the shows that you want to watch, right? It's whatever the parents watch. And so it was a very um, traditional, strict family, loving family that encouraged education. But once I got to the 
college setting, then I, that's where I just, um, you know, wanted to do everything and anything, obviously not, nothing too extreme, but I didn't have that structure of being in class and, and making sure that I complete my homework and focus and time managed. And um, it was, everything was already done for me previously. So that I, I had not gained those skills uh, when I got there. So I did struggle. Um, luckily, I, I did have good friends and, and good uh, uh, positive adults that kept me on track. I'm not sure how many of you might, might know uh, Deanna Gonzalez and at the time Lupe Ontiveros and they would check in on me and what are you doing? What are you doing, girl? And what's going on with your grades? And then later on, you know, you form these tight knit groups and they, you know, it's like one of my closest friends was an engineer. Another one was a chemistry major. Another one was in business. And so just having those conversations with me, it's like, we're all done. When, when are you going to fi be finished? And so as well as, like I said, my, my students. And so finally, I think there's a level of maturity that you need to get to and know what your passion is and know where what you want to do for the rest of your life. And, and what I tell my students is when you're picking what your future career is or what you're going to study, make sure that it's something that even if you didn't get paid, you would still wake up that morning and go out the door and do it because that's how passionate you are and that's how much you love it. And working with high schoolers is extremely enriching to me as, as chaotic as they may be. And, the, and it's never the same type of day every day. Um, but I love hearing their stories. I love problem solving with them. I love watching them succeed. And when they don't succeed, to be able to pick them up and show them how to navigate through that so that they're better prepared for the future. So um, I, I think finally I was ready and mature and ready to go on um, with my with my profession and, and get it done. And then, you know, it was fast speed, fast track after that. Um, I, I, like I said, I think that the challenges that I found was me not necessarily having the skills to be independent at the college level. And so that is something that um, maybe some, some people today uh, that are listening uh, may be facing, but I think um, don't get stuck. Make sure that you seek help. Don't be embarrassed. Um, there's always someone there to help you. And all, you know, sometimes they, they don't know. I think we do a good job at sometimes hiding and pretending things are good and we're doing fine or even not ready to be held accountable. But I, I think, you know, find your Deanna, find your Lupe, find whatever community it is on your campus, um, people that are going to hold you accountable and that are going to love you, whether you succeed or fail, but that are there to pick you up when you, when you need assistance. Thank you, Maria, for sharing. I can definitely agree that even what Lucia said, those that you surround yourself with are definitely the ones that sometimes are brutally honest, but they're the ones that really do hold you accountable and they're your support system. So it helps you throughout your journey in life, through college. So thank you for sharing that with us. Now I want to extend the invitation to Isa to also choose any of the questions that I read. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, I love, I can listen to Maria all day, definitely. So I uh, definitely relate. I would say for my experience, I was the first to go to a college from my immediate family, but um, you know, many of my friends went to a different direction. They didn't go to school. So support was harder. I had to navigate on my own when I went to San Jose State. And this pretty much was a commuter school. I still lived with my parents, but um, I think reaching out and getting support, being part of the study groups and, and finding um, uh, people to support you on campus as well. Um, at the end, after I, I found support um, within study groups and within classes and people that I related to, I was really proud to be part of that Chicano commencement. So that also helped me to continue strong, you know, all the way through, even when there was challenges throughout um, school as well. But I think also too is the experience that I had during uh, attending school as well. So working for my parents and my family, my dad's family uh, business, um, having to answer the phone and greet customers and learn about uh, customer experience all of that was something I didn't want to do. I, I didn't want to be part of that. I just wanted to go to school. So I was forced to, 
to support the family business. But now I look back and I think that was great in terms of experience. And so whether it's through an internship, whether you get paid or not, I would say do your best to really get that kind of experience because those soft skills will come into play when you do go into the, you know, the working environment. And uh, customer experience is important for my job now where it's all about candidate experience and sense of urgency and your brand, building your brand and being reliable, following through and following up is really important. And so I would say, you know, any kind of experience that you can gain at this time is so important to put on your resume because that's going to market you and build your brand. So any skills, soft skills that you can attain now is really going to benefit you later. And so that's what I found from my school is, is balancing that um, work and experience and putting it all together when I did hit the, the market. Hope that helps. Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa, for sharing. I agree. Just mention, just hearing you mention about those soft skills, it is very important because not when you go into your career, you always need to know how to, you know, communicate with others, even work as a team. So those top soft skills are very important. So thank you, Isa, for mentioning that. And now I will read on um, the next question. And the question is directed to Elisa. And it is, did you seek professional mentorship during your college experience at SJSU? And if so, what kinds of mentors did you, find, did you have? Either professors, staff, community members? How did you find them? And how did the relationship evolve over time? And how did these experiences support you in your professional development or your career? Thank you. Um, so yes. One of, I wanted to do a piggyback on two things, one Maria and one Isa said, is find your tribe, connect and find your tribe. Your gente, your comadres, your compadres, your, your homies, <laughs> you know, whoever they may be or how many ever they may be or one or two. I think that was key in, um, for me and still now as you continue development, in your profession, but in, in life. Just connect with people who will be true to you in terms of, um, I think Jennifer, you said, um, you know, who you can count on will tell you, or Yesenia said, will tell you sometimes what we don't like, but it's a true friendship. Um, so those, those are key. And that connects with, for me in nursing, nobody looked like me. I think there was two Latinos in my whole class. I was told by my dean of student, my dean of nursing, I wouldn't make it. So when you have that, that's why your tribe is so important because we will come across in every step of our lives challenges. And so really it's about what do you do with that? Do you disconnect or do you work harder? or connect and reconnect with people. And sometimes those people aren't within your profession. I found my mentors in mujeres that were community advocates. I found my mentors with my sisters. I found my mentors at UC Berkeley, not within the nursing. And you come to understand that sometimes we are creating our own leadership and this is it. You are all it. I look up to you within your area. So don't close yourself off when you're looking for your network and your mentors. Don't just look for them in the area in where that you're going into. All my mentors and the people I most admire and have learned from are outside of nursing. And so um, I think I have become the person I was looking for, but via other people. Um, and um, recruiting nurses, there's a nursing shortage. And um, so I think that's how I would answer questions. You look for it in the most rarest places, you know, that may not be connected to what you're, to your profession. And then the other thing is when you're, I remember in college, you're like, what am I going to use this for? <laughs> you know, you're sitting in class, you're like, you know, Andres en otra onda, right? And then just when you're like thinking, what am I gonna use this for? Remember that everything in life is gonna be a tool. And one day it's gonna come back around and you're like, oh yeah, 
like uh, I think Isa, you said, it's like those soft skills. But we often, when we're young and when we're in class and don't think anything is connected, remember that it's all connected and it all will serve us. And the people you connect, it may be inside and outside of whatever profession you're going into. Um, the outdoors has been my biggest network. And it all connects because it's part of that holistic approach to health that we, as we move through our journey, and then for you right now, it's college, don't forget to connect to your spirit, to your peace, to your love, to your self-love. And those sometimes is somebody who you're gonna, um, that's where you're gonna find your mentorship in somewhere outside and inside of what you're looking at. Um, so it's community, it's staff, it's organizations, you know, I still connect with the people that I uh, was part of the Hawaiian club. And those are good networks because in Hawaii, you know, I have a place to stay. <laughs> so that, that's um, who and, and how my trajectory in terms of support, you find it anywhere. Don't close yourself off. Yeah, thank you, Elisa, so much for sharing and just emphasizing that. Your support system doesn't necessarily have to be your family, but it can be anyone. And thank you all for just giving us an insight that, you know, everyone struggles, but everyone also finds their way back. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much, panelists. I myself was writing down notes. Uh, all of your advice or experience and advice was truly empowering. Uh, now that we got to hear about your SJSU slash college experience, We'll now move on to our second theme, which is your journey post San Jose State or post college experience. Uh, as a reminder, each panelist will have three minutes to respond. And I would like to direct this question, which has two parts, to Joaquin, Lucia, and Mauricio. Uh, part A asks, what jobs or experiences did you have that led you to where you are today? Were were there any career shifts that surprised you? Um, and part B is how did you, how did your perspective of the world change from that of a college student to now a working professional? So I invite Joaquin to share first. Yeah, definitely, thank you. Um, so when I think about my career, right, I'll start with the second part first and my perspective on change as a college student. Uh, you know, I remember being in college and, and I was always worried, like, what is my career going to look like? How am I going to, you know, utilize the degree that I'm getting? And how do I think about that for the real world? Um, you know, there was a point in my career where, where I, I did actually consider changing my, my degree, you know, late in, in my uh, college life. Thankfully, I didn't. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me in my perspective is that things will change, right? What you think you want to do, even at this stage where you're at in your, your life, things are likely going to change. Uh, you may find another career path down the road. You may find something else, you know, as uh, Maria uh, mentioned, like you may find something else that you like in the future and it's okay. Uh, life is a journey. It's about how do you approach that journey and what do you make the most out of it? So when I think about my career, you know, I, I think I, I led a pretty safe um, career. Um, I've always been a little bit risk adverse. Um, so I actually started working full time for a tech company while I was in college. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention in, in my welcome or a little bit about me is, um, you know, my wife and I, we had got married in college um, and actually had uh, our first child in college. So we, we had a number of difficulties and challenges, you know, just even trying to, to figure out and navigate, um, you know, graduating while being parents and uh, newlyweds. Uh, but I was working full time, which I'm sure a number of you are actually, you know, working to support yourselves to put yourself through college. Um, and thankfully for me, I was working for a tech company that gave me that um, flexibility to work full time, but also to work around my schedule. Um, and, you know, after graduating from San Jose State, I spent a number of years working for tech companies. Uh, and, and I was really fortunate to work for some really large companies, um, including Microsoft for a number of years. Um, I then decided to go back and get my MBA. So about six years after graduating uh, with encouragement of my family, 
um, you know, went back and, and I wanted to further my education, uh, knowing for me was, you know, be able to provide for my family and to improve myself and to improve the situation, you know, as we all want, um, you know, to make ourselves better and, and make ourselves better when I think about it is to be able to give back um, in the future. Um, so decided to go back, get my MBA from Santa Clara University. And, and then I joined a company where I was at for about 14 years. And when I think about today about why was I at a company for that long, um, oftentimes in tech, people don't stick around that long. Um, but for me, it was really about trying to get those experiences um, that I could have actually gotten in another company, but I was able to get those experiences within the same company. Um, and when I think about career paths, um, you know, I had considered at certain points, um, still maybe going back and thinking about engineering or did I want to do something outside finance? I was actually given those opportunities if I wanted to do explore to something besides finance at Intuit. And that's the reason um, I really stuck around this company for so long. Because, you know, when we talked about, uh, you know, Lisa and the rest of the panelists talked about building your, what I call board of directors, uh, building your community, building your people. Um, I think that also extends out to the companies that you work for, right? It's really important to find a company that you fit and match the culture, um, the visions, the strategies, and kind of how they think about um, the world and making sure that fits your passions. And, and that's what I found, um, you know, working there for a number of years. Um, at that time, I got the opportunities to help build community outside of Intuit uh, and focusing on the community. Uh, we had a really strong partnership, LBSA at the time, had a number of uh, students that work on different projects for me. Uh, started, you know, um, there was leader of the employee resource group, Latinos that connected into it, trying to partner with other organizations like Hispanic Foundation and other tech companies to build the community um, for employees of, you know, similar looking uh, folks or Latinos or Latinxes. Um, and then some time after that, about five years ago, I decided I wanted to do something more impactful. Um, I didn't want to leave my career, but I wanted to do something more. Um, and what I decided to do is something that um, was something besides just volunteering, but that could bring my expertise to help the community. Uh, at that point, what I did was I joined a Latino Board Leadership Academy with the Hispanic Foundation which was an organization to help Latinx professionals to really develop the skills necessary uh, to join nonprofit boards. Uh, we have a lot of needs in our community. We have a lot of organizations that serve our community, but what we found was there's not a lot of people on boards for these uh, nonprofits that serve our community. Um, and that was really the purpose of um, this program led by the Hispanic Foundation. And really what I wanted to get involved with is really help drive um, and be part of a nonprofit. So I currently sit on the board of Allen Rock Counseling Center. Uh, I'm currently their uh, treasurer. And I've been there for about four years now. Uh, and I think, you know, as leaders of our community, um, this is one of the ways that we can give back and help others in the community. Um, you know, when I think about my own personal journey, I've always been very risk adverse. I've always tended on the side of being uh, with large companies. About 18 months ago, I decided to join a pre-IPO company, which is probably one of the riskiest feelings of my life is to join a company that you didn't know what the longevity was gonna be. Um, and that's where I'm currently at today and enjoying it. Um, and when I think about my career journey, it's really been about um, how do you identify those career and those growth opportunities, finding the new opportunities to stretch oneself, um, and being really proactive about getting there uh, because oftentimes you don't get tapped on the shoulders to, to grow your career, right? You have to be hungry and look for it. Thank you so much, Joaquin, for sharing that shift in from staying comfort comfortable to being comfortable with being uncomfortable in order to grow. Um, that was very empowering and I'm, I'm sure many students were able to to relate to that. Um, I would like to invite Lucia to answer um, whichever part of the question next. Great, okay, I know we're trying to be as concise as possible. So, um, gosh, I mentioned the kind of transition that I went through from, you know, did I say I was doing hair initially? I don't know if I said that. Anyway, 
doing hair, then I did um, did sociology, got into social work. And so I kind of knew the profession by the time I got there. Um, like uh, Joaquin says, risk averse. I'm not really risk averse and I'm a little bit of a rebel. So I, I thought I was going in to just, you know, be in, in uh, social services just for a while. I didn't think I wanted to work for the government. It just felt so restrictive to me. Um, similar to Joaquin, I also found that it actually provided a lot of different opportunities for to grow in so many different ways than than I uh, than I anticipated, including being a little bit of a rebel. So I got to be the one who uh, got to poke a little bit, like, "Hey, I don't agree with this policy. Hey, we really need to look more." Uh, I joined part of what's it's called El Comité, which was service to the Latino community, um, and then beyond that, just looking at policies and what was wasn't working for our my fellow social workers, what is not working for the Latino community. So just continuing to um, challenge um, the status quo, challenge what they were doing, and to be that, um, to gently persist in, in doing so. So I'm here 20 years later, uh, still here, and I now, uh, I'm a trainer, so I get to train our new staff that are coming in, as well as the existing staff on policies and and changes and new things that are coming down the pike. Um, and I think I might say my most exciting thing, because I, I get to talk about it a little bit later, but I'm getting to do things now that I didn't imagine. I always, um, speaking of kind of a journey like when I was little another thing I wanted to be was a teacher and now I'm a trainer so it's it's a little it's kind of the same and now I get to you know teach people how to do something that I absolutely love doing um and I get to work do some systems work with us as a social worker you it's it's really great we've talked a lot about um you know making an impact on the community and and I get to do that on a on a daily basis, almost in my position, as as well as throughout the years, just looking at systems um, and changing them from within. So um, I'll leave that for now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lucia. I think I think it was very very um, empowering and and relatable on how you mentioned like that everything. Um, that you experienced post college was, or most of it was kind of unexpected. However, it was very connected to what your aspirations were when you were younger. Um, I think that also relates to what Elisa mentioned earlier about how everything's connected and things come back around. Uh, so, thank you for sharing that experience. I will now like to invite Mauricio. Um, to share about his uh, journey post SJCU, post college. Absolutely, thank you. So um, I'd like to start with a quote and um, that kind of resembles my career a little bit. And um, and the only thing is like change is really constant, right? In life and the ability for one to adapt to those changes is what determines success. So that's what led me to be where I'm at today. Um, uh, like I said, my background's in mechanical engineering, and here I am doing media and entertainment for a multinational company, uh, rolling out services like Pluto TV and engaging, you know, cultural affiliates and, and different content pieces. So it's it's a long journey. It's a lot of changes, but it's it's been really um, a fascinating um, journey for me because there's a lot of changes that I, I've experienced. Um, and all of that came from, from my experience at San Jose State, being an engineer and affiliated with a lot of the clubs at the engineering cl uh, organization. I was uh, part of the Society of Latino Engineers where I served as a vice president, a treasurer, um, uh, you know, secretary, pizza delivery guy, you know, just to get the members into our team. So I, I do understand how it is to really get the student organizations involved and, and get everyone to cooperate and participate. So I'd say that's one of the key strengths that I actually um, see that really led me to kind of where I'm at today, organizing teams and, and really getting things in, engaged. At the same time, the other thing that I um, found is that 
I always have a, a curiosity, like I like to explore new things. So it might be the engineering piece in me or the entrepreneur aspect, but I always look for things that I can improve, right? And through that nature, I, I find myself in situations where new opportunities play themselves. Um, I did work most of my career um, in startups, you know, believe it or not. Um, started, you know, working for large companies like um, GE and, and then went on to uh, communication companies, Sanagram, and then went to Cisco for many years. But then I took a shift in the startup world and uh, worked for Sling TV and designed products for what's now called Sling TV, which everybody enjoys. Uh, company was acquired by EchoStar and really was successful. Um, and then I went to work at Roku and, and Roku was another success where, you know, we built products and, and engaged with different uh, companies and, and different um, customers. Um, and from there, I went to work at TiVo, which is another name brand, and now Viacom launching products. So it's been an inter interesting change. Um, I think that it's, it's about what passion do I have or what things lead you to, to really keep you engaged in that work, right? And things that really keep you motivated. You know, and sometimes you can find that within the company, that's great. Sometimes you just wanna build that for yourselves and, and really create that opportunity. So think about those areas where you feel passionate about, where you can really make a change, whether it be in your career or in the community. And, and that's really the area that you want to focus on and then the money will come and then you, you'll be able to, you know, do a lot of things and then influence others. That's an area that you really um, drive uh, for, for me, drive a lot of satisfaction, you know, the ability to work and help with teams and help them grow and, and reorganize at the same time. Um, how did my perspective from the world change from college to student? I think that perspective is that when you go to college, you have um, a mentality like, well, I'm going to be uh, in this career and I have a past set. So be open to opportunities. And, you know, like it was said before, mentors come in all different facets, right? You might have mentors in your career. You might have mentors from other areas. So always look out for those people and opportunities to explore and learn and grow. That's really what I look forward to all the time. And I always uh, find that, especially here in the Bay Area, it's such a diverse cultural background that everybody's here to help each other. Everybody's an entrepreneur. And, and interesting enough, you know, um, new opportunities come in where you might not even be looking for one or, or you might just be helping somebody else and that turns into a business. That's the entrepreneurial spirit of the Bay Area and, and Silicon Valley. So um, be open to, to changes, um, embrace life, and be bold, you know. Um, I, I think that that's uh, an advice that I live by, you know, uh, you know, measure your risk, understand what you like and, and go for it. That's, that's my model. Thank you so much, Mauricio. You started it off um, with a great quote about how change is the only constant and then you applied it on how much change you've experienced post-college. However, how many of your experiences and your involvement within college came to serve you now in your career changes. So another affirmation that everything is definitely connected. So thank you so much for that, Mauricio. I'll now pass it on to Jennifer for the next theme. Yes, thank you. Now we are entering our lightning round. So everyone will have 1.5. Um, minutes to answer these questions and I will have my timer on and I will be unmuted so that you all hear the timer go off. So let's get started. So the first question is for Elisa and the question is what is the biggest misconception, misconception about your career field? Okay, timing is no fair. Uh, Miss Big, biggest misconception that nurses only work in the hospital and give shots. Um, nurses range, part of what I love about nursing is that <clears throat> Like Mauricio said, like Joaquin said, there's so many opportunities, administrative, education, I've done training, you know, the sky's the limit. And as Mauricio and Joaquin said, if it's not there, make it, you know. I am going in my next phase, going to combine the outdoors with holistic care and journey within nursing and still get paid as a nurse. So 
Um, that's the biggest misconception. Right now, I am in public health. I would have wildest dreams not be in infectious disease. But right now, a daily activity for me, like I dealt with, a lot of people don't know or haven't learned what public health is until this pandemic. And here we are. Um, and the other thing is that my day goes from doing a rabies investigation to syphilis investigations, to partner notifications on STD and COVID. So I help support the schools locally, which is a really uh, daunting task. But again, it's, it's the biggest misconception that <laughs> all we do is give shots and work in hospitals, but it's way beyond that. Um, and, and we're also in the White House and in government and in policy, so. Okay, thank you so much, Elisa. I didn't hear the timer. I, I did it under. <laughs> you finished just on time, so thank you so much. Now we're gonna be moving on to Isa. And the question is, what is your why and your purpose? Sure, yeah, I love this part. So um, I have been at Adobe for 15 years and I love this company. So um, they promote internal mobility, development and career. And so I love the fact that I'm in a position to uh, manage and to hire. And so it goes back to pay it forward. So I graduated, didn't know what I was going to do. And I did have individuals that supported me and helped me guide me through um, what I actually did well. And that was really, um, you know, coordination. And so I found myself in um, HR, then in recruiting. And so I have an opportunity to look at individuals that have transferable skills um, that want to go into tech. And uh, we do have a contract, um, kind of a program where we take individuals that come on board as a contractor for nine months, build their skill set, um, communication, um, they get to know the internal um, systems, and they get to build a brand. And soon they receive uh, kind of kudos and their top talent. And then we'll look for a conversion, a headcount to convert them and to give them a badge for Adobe. And so I look forward to really. Um, mentoring and investing into individuals that want to grow and have passion to lean in and really come to an appointment to, um, to really thrive. So yeah, that's my kind of purpose. Yeah, thank you so much, Lisa, yeah. for sharing. I'm sorry if my yeah, no. alarm is so loud. <laughs> All right, so we will be moving on to Maria. And your question is, what is your greatest asset and or challenge as a Latinx member in your career field? You know, I do believe that, you know, as corny as it sounds, you know, everything happens for a reason. And whatever traumas or challenges that I face, I, I feel that I can apply them to support my students in education. We have all walks of life of students and scenarios. And so I draw from, from that. Um, so for what it's worth, you know, I was trained, I was trained to do this job on a daily basis. Um, a challenge, unfortunately, um, though now I'm in a new district, but even though I came with um, 20 years of experience from Eastside Union, even though I'm a female, though I'm a female, though I'm brown, just coming into a totally different socioeconomic community, you still get questioned. Doesn't matter how many credentials you have, doesn't matter. Um, how many years of experience, doesn't matter what emergency situations you've been in and, and you know how to do this or you know what kids need because, because you've been there, you've done it. Um, there's still those challenges that exist that where you get questioned and people doubt you and you're different. And so you have to just draw strength um, from knowing that you know your stuff. You know what you're talking about and hold your ground. And so I think, you know, draw from that courage again, from your parents, from your grandparents. Imagine all the struggles that they went through and just, you know, I don't have to be out in the fields. I don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. And so if it if it means challenging someone on their beliefs and interact with kids and serve with kids, and then, then I can do it. I can, I'm willing to take that on. And so. Thank you so much, Maria. I think it is a little too loud. I don't want to scare y'all. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, now, the next question is for Joaquin, 
And the question is, what is an important skill you have developed since you started your professional career? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, when I was looking and thinking about this a little bit, um, you know, I think the biggest um, skill that I've learned, it, it may seem a little corny, uh, and we talked a little bit about it, but I think it's, it's about taking risks. It, it's focusing on yourself and, and finding opportunities to, to make yourself better. Um, earlier in my career, I, I had the, um, I took the risk to reach out to our CFO uh, of a large, you know, company, and I asked him if he'd be open to set up some time with me just to chat, talk about his journey. Uh, and obviously to my amazement, he said, yes, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and that's an example of where I took the risk. Um, but what I got out of that was um, I had asked him, like, talk to me about his journey, right? And he gave me this great piece of advice um, and, and that I used to think about it today, right? He said, you know, the career journey is not linear, right? It's going to take you sideways. It'll take you backwards um, before it takes you forward. But be open to that journey because at the end of the day, it's not about the short term, but it's the long term. Um, and, and, you know, I've applied that, although I was a, not as much of a risk taker, but, you know, in my career, I, I've taken a number of risks. And, and, you know, sometimes that risk is you, you look for another job because you know there's a skill set that you need to develop. And it actually may be um, considering a lower salary or maybe within the company you're at and you may have to make a, a sideways or a backward step to get forward. Um, and I think that's a great advice. Um, but it all, that all came down to taking that risk to talk to someone and to, you know, open yourself to new experiences. Yeah, thank you, Blanky. I think you just emphasizing on being more of a risk taker will de definitely demonstrate to our students that we shouldn't be scared and that it's always those opportunities that we need to take advantage of. So thank you. Now we will be moving on to Mauricio. And the question is, what does a day in your career look like for you? Say that again. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Yeah, no problem. Um, the question is, what does a day in your career look like for you? Well, so it's, it's pretty dynamic. So um, my roles and responsibilities are pretty broad from content acquisition, partnerships, and deployment of a major service like Pluto TV, Paramount Plus. So um, in my current role, um, we manage onboarding distribution of content across 20 countries, um, you know, in Latin America, Brazil, and, and Europe. So as you can imagine, there's a number of things that need to be part of that. Number one is um, what kind of partners we need to work on. Um, what is the content that needs to be there to drive engagement? How do we drive monetization? And then how do we really build more of an audience to really drive forward that, that platform? Um, but, you know, a lot of this comes in from a passion to solve problems and understand how to really work with customers and what customers really looking to engage. Um, we're using this as a platform and then um, I work very closely with a, a very uh, tactical team that really helps and support in a lot of this task. So it's, it's not me personally just doing all that, but really relying on the team that does a lot of that work. And then at the same time, really understanding, you know, what is the market leading to? And not just on the product side, but technology. What, what is the next phase? You know, what's happening, you know, two, three months from now? What are competitors doing like Hulu, Netflix, and Fox, and some of the other content providers? Um, are they relying more on technology, on content? And then how do we really leap forward? So it's a lot of that and, and really putting it all together with the team, make sure that it's complementary to the customer. Yeah, thank you, Mauricio, for walking us through a day in your life or in your career, within your career. So we're going to move on to Lucia. And your question is, what is your favorite thing about your career or current job? Oh, my gosh, so much. Um, I feel like I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get to go to work every day and know that what I do makes a difference to someone's life, to the community, um, every day, whether I'm having an interaction with a, um, with a family member, a kid, whether I'm filling out a piece of paper, you know, some paperwork, which there's way too much of, but even if I'm doing that, that still um, helps a family and it still makes a difference. Um, and that I've got to do that for, for the past, 20 years, I've got to connect with families. I've got to witness um, 
I did mention the type of social work I do. I, it's child welfare, so child protective services. So there are people that come in with just, you know, if, yeah, with just a lot of issues that, that have experienced a lot of trauma. And, and it's really hard because we, you know, we witness that. But um, not only do we get to witness transformation uh, of when things get better for them, uh, we also, it also impacts us. So I think that's another thing that's a little bit, it's selfish and not selfish at the same time, because if you are, uh, remain truly aware of who you are, um, how it's affecting you, um, all of that, you get to just level up your, the work that you do, the work that you do, um, with the community and, um, and it's really amazing. So. Thank you, Lucia, for sharing that with us. I truly appreciate it, and I'm sure everyone else is too. Thank you. And now I will be passing it on to Yesenia. Thank you so much. So our last uh, theme will be advice to current students. And similarly, it will be a lightning round. So all panelists will have only one minute. We're gonna cut it short this time. One minute to respond to one of the following uh, questions and I will be directing them to the different panelists. So like Jenny, I'll have my, uh, my timer on. So the first question is towards Isa. What are important skills a college student should have or acquire when applying for a job in your field? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say that, um, first of all, I have a solid resume and take the time to build that resume because um, that's going to mark yourself. People are going to look at your resume and you're not the only resume they're going to look at. Build your profile on LinkedIn and use your network. So quickly do that. Um, ask for support if you need help with predicting your um, resume, LinkedIn profile. Be proactive. Don't give up. Really proud that you've been here listening to us, right? So kudos to all of you. Um, reach out to me. I'm happy to help you. And just, again, stay proactive, positive, lean in, and get that resume out when you're ready. Thank you. Wow, you were on it. Yes, LinkedIn. <sighs> Plugging the Career Center as well as LB. PSA, we help with uh, developing your resume. Oh, wait, time's on me. Okay, so next question is for Maria. What types of opportunities would you advise current college students to seek during their college career? Um, definitely go out and volunteer or work in the area that you believe is what you want to do. Um, just like me, I worked in a latchkey program, had little ones, and right away I knew that wasn't that wasn't going to be my lifetime career. So go out, explore, um, and see what it is that you like. Go connect with other people, um, get business cards, and just keep in touch. Keep in touch and look for other um, leaders in that area and, and Pick their brain, you know, don't, don't be embarrassed. Ask as many questions, be that enfadoso, enfadosa, and it, because it's important for you to have the most information before you, you continue with your studies, make sure it's in the right track. And then you have a better idea of what road you need to take or what options you have out there, especially if you're first generation, because your, your family may, may not have that information. So you can't be shy when it comes to your future career path. On the dot. Yes, yeah, seek mentorship and seek information. Thank you so much, Maria. Next question. Oh. Next question is for Lucia. So how do you take care of yourself in times of stress? Oh my goodness. So just so you know, I developed a four hour training for our social workers of so one minute. Um, I, I would say the most important thing is self-awareness. So knowing what works for you to lift yourself up, know when you are down and you're getting um, tired or cranky or energized, what do you do then? Do you shop? Do you go on Amazon? Click, 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 you know, <laughs> or have a glass of wine if you're old enough or beer, um, sex, 
uh, all those are fine and good and wonderful. Um, just what are you using at what times? Um, do something that's healthy. Um, I have a lot of books here. Um, oh, I did the, the blur. I'll, I'll maybe just put them on the chat. It's just really um, know, know what your baseline is when you're um, for good and know what your baseline is when you're feeling bad, when you're not feeling great. So take like a high point in your life, just be aware, scale, scale that one to 10. What is that like? What does that feel like? Do the same thing for like a really low point in your life. So you know, um, so you know what that feels like and you're able to make course corrections when you're, when you're feeling stressed. Thank you, Lucia. Self-awareness, De definitely. And the next question will be for Mauricio. What tips do you have to best manage your time? Well, um, the, I'm, I'm not the best manager of time. I got to say that. But you know what? Um, just um, do as I say, not as I do. But um, I think you have to focus on end results, right? And then at the end of the day, what do you have to, to show, right? And, and that goes for anything in your career, whether at the beginning to the end. So set some benchmarks, set some goals, and then set the time to really align your time to get to those goals throughout the, throughout the day or the time that you have. Um, focus on metrics and, and review them constantly. Hey, what did I do right? Can I improve on it? Is there anything that I can do faster, better, more efficient? So that I'm not spending a lot of time on things that you know, may not be impactful. So um, learn to prioritize things in your career that, you know, things that are lower priority that probably take a secondary place and other things, you know, you need to focus on. And that really changes depending on where you are and the time of day, you know, on, in your career. Absolutely. Thank you for your honesty. I definitely relate. Uh, prioritization, something important. Uh, thank you for that, Mauricio. Uh, the next question will be for Joaquin. What are your thoughts on failure and what advice do you have for students who may experience or are, or are experiencing failure? Yep, uh, definitely. Thank you. So I think this is a very interesting one, right? Um, so first of all, failure is a learning opportunity. And so let's make sure we all understand that. Uh, we're all going to fail. Um, you know, it could be a bad grade. It could be you, you screwed up a presentation at an executive team meeting. You know, I'm guilty on both accounts, right? Uh, so what we have to remember is um, failures stem from the fact that you're pushing yourself, yourself outside of your comfort zone and you're doing things that are helping you learn and grow. Um, so really, there's, there's three things you need to do. And I was reading an article and they kind of streamlined it in these three ways. One is own it. So don't make excuses. Don't blame others. You have to recognize your role in that failure um, and focus on what you did or didn't do right, because that's all you can control. You can't control anyone else's actions. You want to learn from it, make sure you identify what needs to be done differently and what actions you need, either a skill set um, or um, something else. What are you going to do in the future? And then move on. Once you've identified it, once you've owned it, once you've assessed what you need to do differently, it's a mistake. It happens. It's in the past. Focus on the future. Thank I think you, I heard a timer. Joaquin. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, yes, but in that, it was very, very um, powerful advice uh, and tools on how to go about failure. Thank you for that. Now, the last question will be for Elisa. What is a piece of advice you would give your college self? Wow, I think Joaquin just said it. Don't be afraid to fail. I just um, moved in my college freshman in Sacramento State. I have two Hornets, one graduating and one just started. And when we walked around to the booth of the students, um, you know, the, the student leaders, I asked them, what advice would you give her? And I think the answer that I'm gonna share with you is what they told her because I thought it was great. And I think several of the panelists mentioned him already is, Get out of your comfort zone. Mm. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't uh, be afraid to fail. And it's okay. I think we're taught that, you know, perfection or at least the attainment. The other thing is don't attach you, yourself to how you think the outcome should look like. Allow it to be. And learn in the process. 
because it may not look like. And then we suffer because we're attached to an idea that may or may not serve us. So. Thank you, Elisa. Definitely a uh, major advice that I think I, I often remind students as well now in my journey to be, to get uncomfortable, to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, to step out of your comfort zone, to try new things, and definitely not attach yourself to an idea of an outcome. Let it flow, let, let, it, let it grow. So thank you so much. Thank you so much panelists for that. That was our final um, question. Uh, next, we will welcome uh, questions from the chat. Thank you, Yesenia, and thank you everybody. If you can please help me in giving both Jennifer and Yesenia a big round of applause for being our amazing moderators of this amazing panel. So at the same time, help me give our panelists a big round of applause and thank you so much for your time for being here. Uh, I know we've gone a little over time, so thank you for hanging in there with us with, with the technical difficulties we had at the beginning, but we have two very important questions. So I hope you can just stay for just a couple more minutes. Um, so question for our panelists, if you can please put down your contact information in the chat, our students would love to know how they can follow up with you. Um, so email or LinkedIn pages if you're on LinkedIn, if you could include that in the chat, that would be wonderful. And if I could just have one panelist answer this question from one of our students, which is if you are at a place where you are unsure of what you wanna do for your career, what steps would you do to figure out what you want to do? So again, if you're at a place where you're unsure of what you want to do for your career, what steps would you do or what steps would you take to figure out what you want to do? So whoever would like to answer that question on behalf of our students. So I might add, to want to add something short, but I really, it sounds cliche, follow your heart. Another thing I like to think about is what did you want to be when you were eight years old? Maybe it's not going to be exactly that, but that and that about um, around that age, you have this beautiful innocence that you don't have all the world telling you what you should and shouldn't be. So, um, and then just talk to a lot of people that any talk to anyone whose job sounds interesting, ask them to shadow, ask them, you know, buy them coffee and ask them to talk with you. Just to add to that, remember, nothing's permanent. Nothing is permanent. You can always change. Joaquin said it. I think most of the panelists said it. Life is not set in stone and we can make of it what we want and make those changes when you want it. And if it doesn't feel right inside in your spirit, in your heart, you change it. You can't make yeah. a, a wrong choice. Yeah, just a comment there. Um, I think that there's a couple of things that, and I've gone through this all the time, uh, having shift careers and not knowing what I wanted to do, but find your passion um, and, and kind of what do you really like to do, right? And then think ahead, what things do you have in your toolbox that can get you there or you have to build skills to get you there? Don't be afraid to explore and experiment and, and talk to people and then reach out to a mentor. You know, LinkedIn is such a great tool, right? You can reach out to someone, find out, and then look for leadership roles that really get you those skills and then get you to that point so you can start evaluating things that you want to do. So that way you, you find balance and things that you want to experiment. Because it might be that that area that you want to explore may not be an area you, you really want to. So you want to start exploring and then that might change. Muchísimas gracias everyone for those, uh, for those pieces of advice. Um, I'm going to share here very quickly and invite uh, either Jennifer or Yesenia to one more time just introduce our students to where we're talking about, Mauricio, we're talking about find those leadership opportunities. Uh, so this is a special invitation to join one of our very active student organizations on our campus uh, that both Yesenia and Jennifer are a part of. So if you want to share very quickly, Yesenia or Jennifer. Yeah, thank you so much, Lily, for giving us the opportunity to talk about LBSA. So LBSA stands for Latino Business Student Association. And what we do in LBSA is we do workshops where we bring professionals to talk to our students about opportunities or ways to grow and be able to get them on to the right track of their career that they would like to. 
Also, we have socials where we invite everyone to come and come together to have fun, get to know one another, and really get out of their comfort zone. We make up all of these games for everyone to meet one another and just really enjoy their time while getting out of their comfort zone. But LVSA mostly is for giving back to the community and helping everyone within our community. But you also don't have to be a business student to be with them, to be in uh, LVSA. You also don't have to be part of the Latinx community. We are open to any major and anyone. We appreciate everyone's insight that comes into LVSA. Muchísimas gracias, Jennifer. And they are very active on their, their social media uh, platforms. So make sure to follow them. There's a lot of great events happening in the, actually in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so lastly, I want to acknowledge, and, and Patty, if you're here, I think I see you just to show your, your face, your beautiful face and say hello. So Patty and Leo Cortez, they're both our uh, co-presidents of the Latino Alumni Network. And so I want to give them a big round of applause for helping us coordinate this amazing, inspiring panel this evening. And we will be following up with all of our student attendees today so you can learn more about the Latino Alumni Network. You don't have to be a current alum to be engaged with some of their events. Uh, in fact, they too have a very active social media page, so we will send you all the information after tonight's event. So thank you, Patty, and thank you, Leo, so much for collaborating with us and bringing this amazing panel together with us tonight here at San Jose State. And so last but not least, uh, please, students, let us know um, some feedback on what you thought about this panel. So there's a QR code here for you to take a very, very brief survey. I kid you not, it's probably like a minute long. Um, so please, this information is really important to us. We want to know what you thought about the event, if you're seeking more opportunities like this in the near future. So please take a few minutes tonight to complete this evaluation, this survey, and let us know. And as you can see here, uh, you will be entered to win a $50 Amazon gift card. So uh, the, the chances, the odds are really in your favor. So take an opportunity in a few minutes to do that tonight. So again, muchísimas gracias a, a everybody here tonight. Please, one more time, if you can unmute yourselves and just give every, our panelists a big round of applause. Muchísimas gracias for being here with us tonight. And if you have friends who weren't able to make it to the event, we will. We did record this and it will be available at the Centro YouTube channel. Uh, so please refer students to that. Probably in the next couple of days, we'll have the recording available. So muchísimas gracias. Have a wonderful evening. Good night, everybody. Buenas noches. Bye.